Next we have Summer Smalling. Summer is here to present her point of view as a parent, taxpayer, school committee member, and a citizen who opposes the encroachment of federal government into our schools and the resulting loss of local control. Summer. Thank you everyone. I'm very nervous, so please excuse me. I am a mother of two. My daughter's in fourth grade. My son is in kindergarten. I'm very involved in my children's education, therefore I ran for school committee and was elected this past May. I'm currently employed, thank you, currently employed at Tufts Medical School in a research laboratory, so education is very important to me. It was the foundation of what got me to where I am today. For me, the first red flag is when my daughter was chosen to participate in the park pilot program at her school. So I began asking my local administrators about the test and found that they had less knowledge about PARC than I did from a simple Google search. Finally, when I realized my daughter, my eight-year-old, would be taking PARC in addition to the MCAS, I realized I needed to put on the brakes and be involved. There is no academic, to my child part no academic benefit to my child participating in this program. Therefore, she did not participate in the program. I held a forum in my hometown to educate other parents on the changes taking place in their kids' classrooms and made exhausted efforts to reach out to the members of the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, including Chairman Mitchell Chester, but I never received a response, not even to respectfully decline. I find it a bit disturbing that these people have control over a large portion of my child's day, yet make no effort to engage in parents when they are interested in learning about the changes in their classroom. I'm extremely unsatisfied with the changes I have seen as a parent in the content of my children's coursework, the recent stress brought to teachers with the increase in standardized testing, and the surging financial burden these changes have inflicted on the local taxpayer. As a former member of my town's finance committee, I have had the opportunity to see the management of local finances both through the lens of the town and as a taxpayer. Local aid to cities and towns has decreased since 2008, making less money available to municipalities to assist in rising educational costs. Race to the top monies granted by the federal government to install assessments aligned to Common Core, known as PARC here in Massachusetts, will not cover the full cost of transitioning to Common Core or implementing PARC. On a side note, if Massachusetts standards have been noted by both Bill Gates and President Obama as the best in the country because we have a state with the highest and most remarkable educational achievements, why wasn't Race to the Top not dubbed the Race to be Massachusetts? It would have been free to adopt our standards and there's no copyright on it. No federal funds would be needed. Switching to Common Core standards has resulted in curriculum changes involving new textbooks and materials. Some of these changes to the curriculum are very heavy online components. This increases the need for a one-on-one -on -one technology initiative, technology support in the classroom, and um, increased updated equipment. The money for these needs will fall on the backs of taxpayers. PARC is an unfunded mandate. There has been no cost analysis of PARC done by the legislature. If your district decides to implement PARC online rather than by pen and paper, the technology upgrades will become absolutely necessary. But the question begs, why are we wasting tax dollars to train teachers and to administer PARC when, you, when we have already vetted MCAS, spent millions of taxpayer dollars on Massachusetts educational frameworks, and we rank nationally in education? Why are we throwing that investment away? With state aid decreasing and the cost of education continually rising, the implementation of Common Core will be devastating to families, communities, and taxpayers who are already struggling. Cities and towns may face challenges such as choosing between funding an ever-increasing school budget to meet mandated changes, changes or funding the needs of other local departments such as police, highway, and fire. Recently in my own hometown, our last town meeting voted the school budget under the requested amount by the school committee. This trend is not only indicative of the financial hardships families are facing, but I can't help but ask, what if the money for the rapidly increasing school budget simply isn't available? As a school committee member, I have recently become more aware and concerned with the loss of local control regarding education. A federal statute written upon the establishment of the U.S. Department of Education proclaims there shall be no increase in authority of the federal government over education. Isn't this precisely what Common Core is implementing with federal standards? Common Core is not 
a true state-led initiative. It will and already has resulted in the narrowing of the curriculum and the loss of local and state control over our standards. State tests such as MCAS were reviewed by local teachers, consultants, and independent organizations. Under Common Core, these tests are developed by private organizations and out of public view. There is no public release of most or all of the test content. Time spent on these tests is also a major concern for me. With MCAS testing, we have four sessions of testing, two in ELA and two in math. The two in reading take place in March and the two in math are scheduled in May, consuming roughly eight hours of our children's time. Under PARC, our children will undergo nine testing sessions, three in ELA and two in math, all scheduled in March, and at the end of the year, two in ELA and two math sessions, both scheduled in May. This accounts for 18 hours out of the classroom these children are spending on testing. Yet another issue I have with Common Core Standards in the PARC assessment is the focus on math and English and disregard for such programs such as art, history, science, and phys ed. A well-rounded education should take into account all of these areas and sh none should take a backseat to another in order to emphasize subjects in which our children are being tested. There are no science standards in the Common Core frameworks. Living in Massachusetts where we are the hub of science, math, and engineering and being a scientist myself, I find this extremely disturbing that we as a state would adopt education standards that do not include the sciences. As a parent, I have become increasingly troubled with the amount of data collected on our children and the t from the time they enter preschool to the moment they leave their educational adventure. This data grab is not limited to strictly academic information, but includes such information as behavioral and disciplinary data, socioeconomic data, and your child's emotions while performing school or homework. Emotions? How and why is this relevant? Amendments to the Family Educational Rights Privacy Act, or FERPA, in 2008 and 2011 changed the language requiring, requiring parental notification before sharing a student's personally identifiable data to that of best practice to inform parents before releasing such information. Best practice? So I, as a parent, am supposed to hope or assume that the administrators and educators in my child's school district operating under the hand of the federal government with the utmost integrity. Another major change brought about by the amendment to FERPA include the disclosure of personal student information to third parties. A third party is defined as anyone whom the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education deems so, including private companies, volunteers, and consultants. Is there any consideration for a child's lifelong right to privacy? As a concerned parent, and I believe, I ask as a concerned parent, and I believe every parent should ask, shouldn't the parent be, giving the, be given the clear and concise information on what data is being collected on our children? Shouldn't we have the final say in who has access to this information? Or simply ask, is there a need to collect personal and private information on our children beyond anonymous assessment scores? Common Core's stated goal is to prepare students for jobs or junior college. Is anyone wondering why the same wealthy people who promoted the Common Core are sending their children to private schools unaffected by this overhaul? Who with a mediocre Common Core education will become the engineers, doctors, and scientists in our future? None but the children of the wealthy. I just want to thank everyone for coming here today, and I want to thank the parents and teachers who could not be here today but stand with us in solidarity. I want to thank the organizations like Common Core Forum and Liberty Chalkboard for being a voice and a source of information. And I ask that everyone continue to talk to their neighbors, their family, and their friends about Common Core and Park. I ask that parents opt out of Park and show to show that we do not support the latest change to our schools. I tell my children that being weird is unique and cool. So if Massachusetts, if we in Massachusetts are weird or unique because we strive for the best education for our children, then I would rather be weird than common. Yeah. Thank you, someone.